Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, I've got a bad back. I went to stay at uh, BDIA Dental Showcase over the weekend, as you probably know, and uh, it just came on after the first night. We stayed, I stayed in a hotel on uh, Thursday night, and then we went to the exhibition on Friday, drove back Friday night. Never drive back from Birmingham on a Friday night, honestly. It took four and a quarter hours driving solid to do an hour and a half journey. Well, no, put an hour on the journey. But anyway, how was showcase for you? Did you go? I think if you're going to take the staff somewhere, like a dental exhibition or something, then probably showcase is, is not the worst thing to take them to, you know? They did have fun. There was, uh, I took the receptionist and the two uh, nurses and it's quite a good education for them, you know, to quite a good to sort of see how big the industry is. <laughs> Not that big actually. <laughs> it's a bit like if you've got a three-year-old or a four-year-old, you know, who's never been out of your village and then you decide to take her up to Oxford Street to show her the sort of the real, the scope of the, <laughs> the actual, the actual universe is bigger than they thought and uh, I got involved in a, uh, through a long chain of events in getting a quote for a 3D scanner, a cone beam, CPCT as they call it and uh, uh, very quickly the chain of events was the guy who came round to uh, so called fix my suction motor from the CDS said the CDS had a, uh, a, a lathe what are they called a, a crown, crown instant crown machine and uh, then I went over to have a look and they wouldn't they you know I offered them 50 grand for it and they decided it was worth 40 or 50 so we parted company but um, Serec machine which is fair enough because it was like it's obviously quite a high volume machine and you know it wouldn't be cost effective for us at that, the prices that they wanted so anyway <coughs> so then I got some advertising material from Iverclaw Viva Dent about a milling machine that they're producing and they've sort of started marketing it almost a year in advance of it being commercially available it's not they're still taking pre-orders it's not even going to be um, it's not even going to work until uh, January, you know, you won't be able to, I don't think, the first units will. So, which leads me to suspect that the unit they had at the showcase was a mock-up. I think they probably just took the plastic shell case and put a, a little vise with a drill in it and sprayed a bit of water around the inside of it because I never saw it working. And I did never saw it, you know, for me or for anyone else, so. But anyway, the point is it's not, they're not ready to deliver it yet, so. And uh, they are going to send me some prices on it, but but then um, they had a, one of these cone beam scanners on there. My my old OPG is not working. I've had a quick go at trying to get it working, but uh, there's no point. It's uh, it's so old. It's it's literally an old. Uh, one that used to take the uh, plates, you know, the uh, used to develop films chemically, and then it's been sort of retrofitted with a digital pickup. So you know, which then goes through an extra box of tricks, which is on the top, and when that, that's malfunctioned, and nobody knows why. So decided I'd sort of get a new one of those, but the problem is. Uh, which one, you know, I mean, there were about three or four at the exhibition. Now, the problem with, I mean, the way I sort of treat the exhibition is I go and I have a look. This is the way I buy stuff. I go along, have a look, decide, you know, ask some questions, get a demo, decide which one I like, come back, do some spreadsheet it all, you know, find out, get a, get a detailed quote, spreadsheet it all, work out what the cash flow implications are how much I'm going to need to charge, how much we're going to get on referral, etc, etc. 
and uh, that is absolutely not the way that showcase works the showcase are completely primed to do things asked backwards which is basically they are all gear gearing gunning for orders they've all been told they've got a target you know this is how much business we want to do at showcase and so what happens is when you go along they expect you to be in a position to sign on the dotted line so they're like uh, you know like can you give me a demo of this uh, machine and they're like they'll give you like a quick a cursory demo and then not not a demo as in it working or anything but just their spiel you know like their elevator pitch their sort of five minutes sometimes they ask you questions of how you want it what are you going to use it for other times you just get their standard pitch telling you how good it is for ortho when you don't do any ortho and uh, And then they follow that up with, uh, yeah, yeah, so what, you're going to buy one. <laughs> you know. So if I say to them, oh, do you want to, can I have a quote? Then they might have like a second or third generation photocopied quote form, which is always somehow reduced so that it's got like a three inch border and the quote's really tiny in the middle. And then they put down one cone beam CT. 59,000 pound minus discount and uh, and there you go there's your quote thanks very much so we uh, we put up with this from from a couple of firms the uh, Carestream 8100 apparently is the cheap and cheerful one which I suppose if you're on the NHS you're gonna want the thing that does the job the cheapest uh, and that's being sold by Dental Directory and also Carestree themselves. And believe it or not, at the exhibition at least, Dental Directory were doing a better deal than Carestree. So how they can afford, you know, <clears throat> and Carestree wasn't prepared to match Dental Directory's price, which is just incredible. I mean, Carestree make these sodding things and yet they can't sell them for less than their distributor, who presumably takes a cut out of, out of the <laughs> <laughs> what the dentist pays but Carestream not going to reduce their cut no oh no they're uh, they, you know they don't want to sell them there the girl who was there no nice girl and everything from Carestream but I said to her this is I said you're about 5,000 out here you know you're about 5,000 more expensive than dental directory which is literally across the aisle I said I don't know uh, you know so and she's like oh do you want to buy one and I'm like well why why would I want to buy one when I can walk five yards and buy one for five thousand pounds less? And she's, you know, so I said to her, "Well, what's the, you know, what are you going to do about that? What's your solution to that?" And then they don't have a solution. They don't even try and find out what the solution is. They, you know, they don't go to the manager and say, "Look, we've got a problem here. We're not going to sell any of these eighty-one hundreds because." Because dental, I've seen a quote from Dental Directory and they're selling them for 5,000 less than us. What are we going to do? The answer is sit there looking fat, dumb and happy and not sell any. So, you know, the most they come up with was said, look, look, you know, you want to look at the Dental Directory dealer, uh, look at the package, you know, look at what they're offering. It might not be everything it seems, which uh, seemed to me to be a bit of a... I mean, okay, they couldn't do anything else, could they? So they just had to result to slagging off their uh, distributor, who's doing a better, a much better job of selling their, their goods than than they are themselves. So why not slag them off? You know? <laughs> oh dear. Oh. And there's another a good one, quite a good one from Plan Mecca, from what I can work out. And this thing does a. Uh, a picture of you, you know, it takes a picture of your face and that's in 3D and that's quite impressive because then you can do a cross section like a Terminator showing all your your teeth exposed and everything in on your face so that's favourite at the moment although it is a bit more expensive and then you've got uh, oh is it Henry Shine oh god Henry Shine oh god Henry Shine 
Henry Shine, I can only assume that you're subsidising the losses that you make in the UK from your profits in the US. I can only assume that because I do not know how you sell anything. There's a guy, the guy who just, you know, they see you looking at this thing and they say, oh, well, let's get our expert in on this, you know, our expert. The guys from Plan Mecca, I think they're Finnish. And when they get their expert in, he is an expert. Do you know what you can, <laughs> he's, he's one of the guys who's worked, who's seen the blueprints, do you know what I mean? This uh, guy from uh, this guy from uh, Oral B, uh, not Oral B, Henry Shine. He's not the uh, he's not an expert. He's basically just uh, their sales, their chief salesperson. You know, he's the bloke who's who's got the spiel to sell the OPG and he just came in and did uh, you know just gave us this five minute thing about how it's got twin pillars and if it doesn't have twin pillars then it shakes about so that you don't get the nanometric accuracy and I mean don't get me wrong it's a German machine I mean, it's a very fine machine but uh, like everything else from Henry Schein it's 30% over the odds in terms of what it should cost. Now it's for the it's for the German market. It's designed for dentists who are earning who are, who are mostly in the private sector. And let's face it, in the United States, in the United Kingdom, we're not, we're not actually even if we're in the private sector, we're not really in the private sector. You know, we are we're not struggling, but I mean we're competing with a state subsidized service that offers a full course of treatment for 56 quid so you know that's quite that's quite a lot of competition and uh, if it wasn't for the cooperation of the workforce in providing that by, by uh, using uh, the cheapest materials and taking the least amount of time and using the cheapest laboratory work and I think to a certain extent warping the treatment plans Warping the clinical advice that patients get, um, they wouldn't be able. It wouldn't be sustainable. But apparently, it is sustainable. If the workforce cooperates. So, you know, so that one was really out. Of, and he had halitosis. Oh, and there's nothing as a dentist. There's nothing worse than having to stand there and listen to a bloke who, where every sort of say, 30 seconds or so, you get this whiff of something or other going on inside his gums you're never going to buy anything off of anyone like that not asking someone like that to sell to a dentist in fact you know if you're going to sell to a dentist you've got to, you've got to use people who've got nice teeth i know it sounds stupid but i'm not gonna you know it's a it's a tangibility thing isn't it if if you are uh, waiting room is run down then people will think that your dentistry is run down as well they'll think that you treat your work in the same way with the same care that you treat your waiting room and so if everything is shabby and falling apart they'll assume that whatever you do for them in their mouth is probably going to be they're going to say this guy's got you know doesn't care about the patients in the waiting room and then all of a sudden he turns into uh, you know, Steve Dunn in the mouth. He's not, because he doesn't. People don't change like that. They tend to be, apply the same standards across their entire life. So, if you, uh, uh, if you've got, you know, if you're not looking after your teeth, the chances are you're not looking after the dentist. Because they, on the basis that you care so little about oral health and yet you're selling a product to dentists that's designed to improve and maintain oral health but you obviously don't you don't care whether it works or not <laughs> oh, anyway we went because uh, for the sake of completeness you know but the problem is that they as I say they've got this sort of mentality now well do you want to walk away with one you know we've got we've got one boxed out the back because don't mean they have but 
I mean, they all want to, a lot of them don't do show deals. I thought that they would, there used to be quite a few showcase deals. I went to buy a saddle seat and uh, bam back, and we're not doing show deals. And I, and I said to him, you know, are you doing a show deal? And he said, no. He says, it's too difficult to explain to everybody why, you know, bought one last week, why the price has gone down. And next week, why the price has gone up. And I'm like, uh, it's not really. <laughs> it's not really. You just tell them you had a show deal to encourage, because you wanted to, to encourage people to come to the show, because they can, you know, they can get a deal. Now, they, and then more people will come to the show. So, see so your goods and products, because being a hardware manufacturer, it's not going to. I mean, they will send you a seat. You have to pay thirty-five quid for them to send you a seat to look at and then um, and then if you decide that you don't like it then you can send it back and then uh, all it's cost you is 35 quid but I don't know you know in a show you can look at one for free can't you oh dear so I was talking to this uh, guy from uh, where was it I think it might have been Carestream and I said to him, you know, I need to need to see some figures, you know, because I don't. When my patients come in and I say to them, like, oh, by the way, you've got like, you've got abrasion, you've got uh, some plaque, but it's mainly on the inside of the lower molars. You've got like, for example, a filling's shown up on your left bite wing. I say to them, look, don't worry, you don't have to remember all this. Then I will write all this down for you. I will write all this down. Don't worry about remembering it all, because I've been to doctor's appointments, and. I've come away thinking not only did I not remember all the blood test levels that he was going on about or the diseases that he said that I might have I can't even remember the freaking doctor's name I can't even remember his name so I can't even email me email me and say look can you could you please just put this down in words of one syllable for a bear of little, very little brain so I said to this guy, look, you know, what you're doing, you're saying after like a minute, it's just coming across as blah, blah, blah. So could you put this down for me in a quote? And he's like, oh, okay, you want something on paper, do you? All right then, well, what would you like? I mean, I could email it to you. I could uh, write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, I could uh, or send you an SMS. And I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> you're buying a piece of kit for somewhere between fifty and a hundred thousand pounds. You know, I mean, that's an expensive car. You don't get that attitude from a car salesman. He he won't say to you, yeah, yeah, we got this one over here in red, or we got another slightly different shape over here in green. Do you want to buy one? You know, and oh, oh, what you want like a proper quote? Do you? Oh well, what about an SMS? Suppose I SMS it to you. I just, it's incredible, unbelievable, unbelievable. I said to him, I'm going to have trouble parting with 50,000 quid on the basis of what you send me in an SMS. Oh, yeah, 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 I suppose, yeah, I can see that, you know. Oh, he thinks, all oh, right, we've got a right live one here. Doesn't want to just, you know, just the bloody dentist, they've got millions. They just want to make trouble, cause trouble. We've gone to all the bother of creating an x-ray machine for him and I've spent at least five minutes explaining it and now he's being a right tit about forking up 50 grand. Well, I'm sorry. That's just the way I am. So we came away with none. Because as I say, they expect you to do all your research beforehand. They expect you to do all your spreadsheeting beforehand and just come along and show them the money whereas I'm gonna I do it the other way around I've been along I've had a look I've chosen which one I'm gonna probably gonna get the plan mecca one and I'm gonna have a good old long think about it which is what I do for any expenditure in excess of 50p I have a good old think and then I'll place the order because I think they were nice people and they didn't put me under any pressure and treat me like an idiot Right, I hope that's helped, but uh, perhaps I'll talk a bit more about it tomorrow. Bye.